Shalom and welcome to the Good Sub Torah. This year is entitled, Can a Kohen Go to the Kever of Rashbi? on like Baomer, or any time for that matter. Can a Kohen go to Maratha Machpelah? Kever Rachel, the Rambam's Kever. Basically, the question is do we say the Kever of a Tzaddik is not Tomei? Now you say tzaddik and maholi, but what does that have to do with tuma and tara? So it's fascinating sources on this topic. Chinuch on parshat emor says the whole reason for tuma tagu when a person dies, it's the highest level of tuma because it's a body without a soul. The body, the source of all the yitzhara, all the problems, all the sins. That's it. When the soul is there, it justifies the synthesis. But now that's it. All the problems began with that object. And he says, and it could be that a body of a tzaddik, if there was a perfect harmony, it didn't bring his neshama down, then maybe it shouldn't be tame. That's a big statement. It's tough for taking hashkafa, reason, a philosophy, behind the mitzvah and bringing it into the mitzvah. It's a big, big deal. And he says such a possibility. The question is, where do we go with this? So this midrash about Eliyahu Hanavi, Isha Shunamid, and then he was on the bat, some say Eliyahu was Pinchas, and, and Eliyahu uh, was a Kohen, and he resurrected the kid, even though the boy was dead. And some said, no, really wasn't dead. It, uh, he was just very, very uh, sick and almost dead. And some say he was dead, but it was Pikuch Nefesh to resurrect so. And some say we can't rely on a miracle. A Kohen couldn't do such things. Some say, because we get the Shashem, he was allowed. Wow, back and forth, Midrashim. But Eliyahu being a Kohen, and he, he did keep contact with a. Uh, with a dead person, and maybe he was involved in the burial of Rabbi Akiva Dif in Midrashim. So where do we come out with all this? The bottom line is, the bottom line is, in terms of the Rishonim fasting discussions in Tosfos, throughout Shas, Ramban on the Torah, Ramban on Shas, discussions all over the place. Some want to say that you have a tzaddik that dies, is Tameh, but if he dies through the shikah, through her divine kiss, so to speak, that process of death doesn't create Tuma, which of course there's only a few in our history. We read Ma, Moshe, Aaron, Miriam, but uh, Stav Tzadik would be. But the bottom line is with all the different discussions in the Midrashim and the Rishonim, usually we talk bottom line, Halacha, we talk about Rambam, Rif, Rosh, Shulchan Aruch. Mordechi or Zarua, the classical poskim, and none of them have any permit whatsoever. None of them say, yes, a tzaddik's body is not tummy, a Kohen could be there. They don't say that. It's brought down in the poskim first, the Pitre Chuv in the 1800s mentions in the commentary on the Shulchan Aruch, Yoridei Shin Ayin Bed Bed. The Yoridei, the Pitre Chuv mentions it over there. He says he hers in the name of the Bate Kuna, the, the Sefer mentioned possibility, but he rejects it. Petri Tshuva, Kitzer, Shulchan Aruch is against it, the Chachmat Adam is against it. So you have fascinating discussion thousands of years ago about it. The classical postcode don't have it. The more recent postcode of the century clearly prohibit it. So therefore, Kohen certainly must talk about postcode about going to Maratha Machpelah, any of these places, is there svara to say that it's not really the right place, that there's a mechitza, and there's a separation, that one is not considered the same component as Tumat? That's a discussion. Everyone should talk to the post but the simple assumption is that all because the person was a great tzaddik does not mean he is not Tame. The simple assumption in the post is that person, the body is Tame, and therefore Kohen should avoid it. Shalom.